Okay, so welcome to our uh, example on uh, cantilever method. So this time we have uh, a specific uh, column cross section for each of the columns. So what we'll do here is uh, to adopt the same procedure but uh, let us incorporate uh, differences in their cross section especially in i so the first step here is to look at the section which has the highest value so among the columns we have 6500 as the highest value for the areas so by that by that we can uh, consider this as an area which is 100% okay so the highest is always 100% so we divide all of our area by 6500 okay so all of this shall be divided by 65 so that the share of the column 1 will be equal to 100% of the area and the area 2 just be equal to 80% and the area 3 is 60% and the area 4 will be also 100% or equal to a unit then as usual we are going to locate the cent center of gravity among these columns see uh, going to adapt this one then we solve for the center of gravity so we are going to have here the reference line or the left marsh leftmost portion will be at the left at the along the column one and then we designate certain distance so we do not know yet this uh, distance this is actually x bar okay so solving for x bar we will have to adopt this formula so summation a times x from your reference line so the total area here we'll just have to add this one so this is um, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 0 0.8, 2 0.8 plus 0 0.6. We have 3.4 times x bar. Okay, so area 1 is 1 with no distance from your reference line. And then uh, the area 2 is... 0 0.8 times 6 plus the third area is 0 0.6 times distance from your reference line that is 10.6 all right so we have this the last one times 18.6 so 6 plus 4.6 that is 10.6 plus 7 17.6 plus 0.6 that is 18.2 so the centroid is equal to 8.64 from the left most portion of the structure so where is that located so all in all we have 
18.2 if we're going to divide that by 2 that would be yielding to 9.1 so basically if this will be our center okay so if this will be our center your x bar shall be less than that center because the center is uh, 9.1 okay but it is um, actually exiting 6 so this is uh, your x bar equal to 8.64 meters and let us have this as our centroid say so this is our CG okay so our next step is to determine your i so of course we will be needing the transfer distances of each of this column to this centroid so we need to determine this this uh, uh, 2 up to the centroid is 8.64 minus 6 that is actually 2.64 and then we also have this one the third column up to the center of gravity is 10.6 minus 8.64 that is equal to 1.96 okay and then of course the, the fourth column up to the centroid okay is 18.2 minus 8.64 or that is equal to 9. Point 56 meters so these are the transfer distances of each of the columns from the centroid because as usual we are going to compute for compute for your i i bar okay so this just equal to the summation of area times the transfer the transfer distance okay so we can say that area 1 times x1 squared plus area 2 times x2 squared plus area 3 times x3 this is squared and uh, area 4 times x4 squared so area one is um 100 percent that is one this is one times this one 8.64 and this is squared and then area two is 0 0.8 okay x2 is um this 2 up to the centroid that is 2.64 this is also squared and then uh, area 3 is 0.6 times 1.96 okay this is squared plus 1 times 9.5 56 and that will be also a squared so we calculate i bar 
Hence, we have 173.924 millimeter raised to 4, the fourth. Okay, so now that we have those values, I think uh, we are now ready to compute for the actual forces. You have two actual forces here for the ground floor and the second floor. So you may start with the upper portion. Of course, you will be also utilizing this figure. Okay, just copy that. And then um, we consider the point of inflection of the mid of the second floor. Okay. The mid of the second floor. Then uh, we tend to delete this one. Okay, I think I think we should have to reserve for the the lower portion. See, just copy this for a while before we delete. So we are going to delete now the lower portion so that we our concentration is on the upper portion. Okay, so we have bisected 3.6 there. So this 3.6 is actually divided by 2. So 3.6 divided by 2 so that yields to 1.8 meters so next we are going to take note of the center of gravity so here's the center of gravity so on that center of gravity there will be rotation along the direction of the lateral force so basically that will tend to rotate a clockwise rotation See, this is M1. So, we are going to delegate now the directions of your uh, actual forces along the column. So, of course, your, your boundary is the center of gravity. Okay? So, just bear in mind that... Uh, our direction should counter this M1. So considering the right portion of your center of gravity, from center of gravity, that will rotate clockwise. So therefore, it should have a counter direction for that M1. Okay. So we counter that. Say this is um, P kg this is p lh and then of course this should be going downwards to counter this m1 okay so remember that we have different direction on the vert along the vertical on the left and right portion of the center of gravity so observe that this is going downwards and for the right portion that is going upwards and the basis is that the rotation okay so you should have a counter direction for that rotation so therefore this is a uh, actual force along ie and this is actual force on gf as well next we compute first for m1 okay m1 sim simply equal to 36 times 1.8 that is 64.8 kilonewton meter so this will be our basis in determining 
this actual loadings. Okay, so we start with PIE. So we'll just have to employ this uh, formula MC all over I. And our moment is uh, moment 164.8. So, we need to multiply that by 1 million to express it in Newton millimeter. And then, the distance uh, by the way, uh, let us simply correct this. So, this, sh this should be meter raised to 4 because all of our bases are in terms of meters so the distance of uh, ie from the centroid is actually 8.64 or that is to be multiplied by uh, 1000 to make it in mm so our i is in terms of meter raised to 4 so we convert that okay so we have here one meter is equivalent to 1000 millimeters so we just have to raise this to four and therefore that is 173.924 times 10 raised to 12 this shall be millimeter is to four so we have 173 okay Point ninety four times ten raised to twelve. So PIE is equal to we have three point twenty two times ten raised to negative three. So something is uh, missing here. So still need to multiply this by the area of that column. And that is actually 1 okay, times 1000 squared. So why do we need to multiply it by 1000 squared? Because this is 1 meter squared. Okay. To make it in mm, we need to multiply it by 1000 squared. Hence, we have PIE is equal to 3,218. Newtons or simply this is equal to 3.22 kilo Newtons So next we have P JF So we have MC all over I times area of area of that column say this is 2 2 this is 2 and this is m1 this is m1 okay so we have uh, 64.8 
times 10 to the 6 the distance of 2 from your center of gravity is 2.64 times area 2 is actually 0 0.8 Uh, we need to multiply it by 1000 again. This is 0 0.8 times 1000 squared all over 173.94 times 10 raised to 12. So we have 786.81 newton or that is 0 0.787 kilonewtons so next we proceed to pkg so we have pkg we have m1 c3 all over i times area 3 so this is equal to 64.8 times 10 raised to 6 times distance of 3 from the center this this one 1 1.96 times 0.6 the area this one times 1000 squared all over 173.94 times 10 raised to 12 we have 0.438 kilonewton and then for the last column here PLH so do it directly 64.8 times 10 raised to 6 so the distance of that is this one 9.56 times 1000 and then we have 1, 1,000 squared all over 173.94 times 10 raised to 12. So PLH shall be equal to 3.56 kilonewtons. Basically, these are the forces on the upper column okay so if we need to do it on the lower one of course we also have the point of inflection here the mid of each of the column then we just omit the lower portion so 4.9 here now is uh, being bisected so 4.9 divided by 2 is this distance That is equal to 2.45. Hence, we place here the rotation along the cent center of gravity. Okay. So, just take moments at that point and solve for M2. say 
m2 is equal to 36 times the distance is 3.6 plus 2.45 or that is 6.05 plus 45 times 2.45 is equal to 328.05 kilonewton meter so we label these two will be going downwards and the right portion will be going upwards let's bring this down so this is actual on EA this is actual along F B this is GC and actual along H D so we compute PEA you may omit all, all, all of this uh, notation and come up with a value of kilonewton so we have uh, sorry the moment so we have m c over i times area so for ea the moment is 328 Point zero five times distance is this one eight point sixty four that is one unit all over I one seventy three point ninety four so therefore PEE is equal to 16.29 kilonewtons at the ground floor next we have pfb is three two eight point zero five times Two point sixty four times point eight all over one seventy three point ninety four and then PGC Three two eight point zero five times distance one point ninety six times point six all over one seventy three point ninety four. And we have PhD is equal to 328.05 times 9.56 times 1 all over 173.94. So we can compute PFB to be equal to. Three point ninety eight kilonewton and then PGC is two point twenty two and PHD is eighteen point zero three kilonewton. 
so of course we wanted to put it in a diagram so that we will uh, work portal by portal now we go back to the requirement of the problem first column 1 2 3 and 4 so it should be specified in the problem that this is 1 column 1 column 2 3 and 4 so for for the ground or for the second floor these are the loadings for the second floor okay and for the, the ground floor these are the actual forces now if we need to get the shear force at column one of course we need to label this this is actually the shear force of column one if this is specified to be one two three four so in the problem it could also speci specify these columns at the ground okay five six seven and eight so if we need to have the shear force of column one this is actually v ie so for v ie we need to to consider this portal because there will be also point of inflection at the mid of the column as usual so let us consider that portal say uh, PIE was already obtained to be equal to 3.22 this is 36 okay so we need to determine this VIE and there will also be a shear here say this is shear at IJ and we also have actual force on IJ now we label the dimensions this is 1.8 and this is half of 6 that is 3 so we'll just have to take moments at this point say so this is point 0.1 Okay, so summation moments on point 1, we have VIE, that will be positive rotation, times 1.8, minus 3.22, times 3, this is equal to 0. Okay, so VIE is equal to 5.37 kilonewton. Okay, so this is the answer. So what about the actual force on IG? So this is actually the actual force on IG. This is PIG. So, if we know this to be 5.37, all we have to do is to sum up forces along x is equal to 0. We have leftwards 5.37. We have rightwards 36, we have left, leftwards PIG is equal to 0, so therefore 
PIJ will be equal to 30.63 kN. So next, what about the shear force on KG? So the shear force on KG could be illustrated in this. Okay. Say I'll, I'll just assume it to be leftwards. So this is V KG. So that again we refer to this portal. So of course the prerequisite of these portals are the portals that adjacent to the portal of K. We need to proceed to L and J. So starting with the, the portal of J. Okay, so maybe we have a duplicate here. Let us have this uh, space here. So at J, we have a T section. T section. So this is J. What do we know on J? Actually, we have PJF. This one. PJF is 0 0.787 kilonewton. What else do we know? So it will be coming from I. So do we know VIJ? So, of course, VIJ could be simply obtained by this summation forces vertical is equal to zero. So, we have going downwards 3.22, going upwards VIJ is equal to zero. So, therefore, Vij will also be equal to positive 3.22 kN and that is going upwards on this portal so when it be, will be transferred to so this is I to J it will be going downwards so we have 3.22 and PIJ is leftwards it should be rightwards here now and uh, I think we have already obtained that one that is 30.63 so let us now assume direction for this say this is shear on J J F shear on J F there will also be P P J K and a uh, shear on JK. Of course, the technique is to take moments at the point of inflection of the beam first. Okay, so if I'm going to tag this as 2, we take moments on 2. So we have, okay, so let us specify distances. 
half of 6 here on the left is 3. So this is 3. Half of 4.6 at joint J is 2.3. And this is 1.8 is determined. Okay, so we take moments. 3.22 will have a uh, counterclockwise. This is negative. 3.22 times 5.3 minus another counterclockwise. 0.786. Point seven eight seven times moment arm is two point three. What else? This is a positive rotation VGF VGF times one point eight is equal to zero. One Two, three. So VGF is equal to 10.49 kilonewton. So this will now be our value for GF. Say uh, 10.49. Now that we have completed the joint J, we can now. Uh, intersect that at joint K. So another T section here. Say uh, this is joint K. So what do we know on K? Of course we just transfer all of the forces. If this is going upwards, this should be going downwards VJK. And VJK could, could be obtained again by summation forces vertical equal to zero. So we have negative 3.22 here, downwards 0.787, and then plus V. JK is equal to zero. So VJK is equal to four point zero one kilonewton. So we can obtain also PJK by uh, Summing up forces horizontal. So horizontal forces on G we have that 30.63 rightwards minus leftwards PJK minus this one. Ten point forty nine C is equal to zero. So PJK is twenty point fourteen kilonewtons. Okay, so this is twenty point fourteen and this is uh, four point zero one. So we can transfer all of the values. So this is upwards. This should be going downwards here with the same magnitude. Similarly, this is leftwards. So it should be rightwards here on K, which has a value of 20.14. So what else do we know on K? So we also have an upwards P K G and P K G is 0 0.438 that is going upwards 0 
0.438 okay so this is the unknown vkg it's the unknown vkg so next we complete this uh, portal by knowing the forces here on the right portion of the beam KL okay from KL we need also to proceed with the L okay so I'll just place it here this is L so what do we know on L okay we actually have computed LH PLH is uh, 3.56 going upwards this is uh, 3.56 56 and uh, automatically this shall also be equal to 3.56 now on K we can uh, actually take moments at this point so of course we will be needing the distances adjacent to K so if we have k on the left this is half of 4.6 that is 2.3 okay this is 1.8 and half of 7.6 is 3.8 and if i'm going to tag this as a 0.3 we just take summation moments on 3 equal to 0 so negative 4.01 moment arm 2.3 plus 3.8 we have 6.1 what else another negative rotation this one 0.43 uh, that should be positive 0 0.438 times 3.8 and then an another positive rotation VKG this plus VKG times 1.8 so we have 4.01 VKG and 0.438 1, 2, 3 so this 20.14 will have no moment arm on 3 this is equal to zero therefore vkg is equal to 12.66 kilonewton okay so actually we have uh, we do not need the portal of l in this solution so anyway if we are concerned to con with the values here all we need is to of course complete the portal and again transfer to the adjacent portal okay so we have uh, this one let us check so if this is an upward so you just transfer here 
and then let us have a check mechanism here if it will really yield to zero so here we have 4.01 downwards and two upward forces so so this will just add up so we have an almost equal to zero result here okay And if you wish to continue, or if the problem would require you to have unknowns on this adjacent portal, of course you complete the forces that could be obtained by summation forces horizontal. That is just equal to 20.44 minus 12.66. That is 7.48. So eventually it will just transfer here. 7.48 and this shall be also 7.48. So that's it. Uh, we have already determined all of the unknowns required in the problem. So just remember, in cantilever method, the first thing to solve is the force on the column. And that could be obtained by this formula, mc over i times the area. And we have gone through solving for the moment. And since the, just the... the distance of that column to the cent centroid or the center of gravity all over i and i here is just summation of ad squared of the column d is the distance from the centroid of that column and then we multiply it by the area okay so by that we can now take advantage of taking moments at the point of inflection of the beam so that is the pattern of the solution and then after you have completed all the forces on each portal by applying the equilibrium equation you can transfer already what you have obtained from that portal transfer it to the adjacent portal same magnitude but oppositely directed uh, don't worry on the sign because um, if you have uh, misassumed the direction, it will just have a negative sign. Just stick to your assumption and then just carry the sign in your solution. So do not worry on um, assuming directions when working on the portal. So again, your answer will just tell you that you have misassumed the direction. So the procedure is maintain it, carry the sign, and transfer it on the adjacent portal, applying the axiom, the same magnitude, but oppositely directed. So I think this shall end our topic on cantilever method and this cantilever method will be the last topic on our structural theory one. So I would like to reiterate that the learnings that we have obtained on this subject will be of prerequisite of your higher subject or major subjects that will proceed to this structural theory one. And this is really a crucial learnings in terms of your course and in terms of board exam later on so this shall be 
mo the most important learnings that you should absorb. So with this, I would like to extend my gratitude in uh, your participation in this subject and I hope you will uh, all pass and good luck to your exam. So thank you and uh, uh, have a great day.